Welcome to the very first late night edition of Wolf Tracks, where our hosts take you out to late night hot spots of Port Orchard. Tonight, imagine what happens when thousands of Washington teachers voice their concerns for education. We'll show you as we follow SK teachers on the march to the state capitol. Lights, camera, action. Excitement is filling the South Kitsap Theater as the winter musical nears its opening date. Meet the singing, dancing, hardworking students of SK's upcoming production, Fiddler on the Roof. And tonight, we also show you the behind the scenes of our own production, Wolf Tracks. All this and more, so stay tuned. Guys, the camera is rolling. Mm. Hello, and welcome to Wolf Tracks. Tonight, we're going to be taking you all over the town to see some of the unknowns of Kitsap County. We'll start the show as soon as we get out of rehearsal. Yeah, rehearsal seems like it can drag on forever. But I'm not complaining. There's always things going on here. I like the special effects in this show. The end result is promising to be spectacular. Being the stage manager for the show, I took the liberty of putting together a little piece on Fiddle on the Roof. Check it out. As the good book says, every school should have a massive winter musical. And this year is no exception, with Fiddler on the Roof currently in rehearsal. Uh, Fiddler on the Roof is about turn-of-the-century Russia and the forces of change on one man's family and his religion. Fiddler on the Roof? Sounds crazy, no? But in our little school, you might say everyone involved with the show is like a Fiddler on the Roof, trying to scratch out a play and sing a simple tune without breaking their neck. Lord knows. And just trying to get everybody where they need to be, when they need to be, and to make them look good doing it, um, it's tough, but it's fun and I think it's going to work out. And it makes people understand why it's so important for everyone to always be at rehearsal because if one person's gone in a big number like tradition, it makes it off for everyone. In the circle of our little musical, we have our characters, Tevye, Yente, Perchik, Motel, Laser, but most importantly, our beloved director. Then there are the others in our show that form a much bigger circle, the Papas, the mamas, the sons, the daughters, and the Russians. During the rehearsals, everything moved smoothly. Well, there was a time when John said Gerrit's line, but that is settled, and now all is peaceful. For a, for a relatively large cast, everyone's getting along really, really well, I think. Uh, everybody's getting pretty close. Uh, I haven't seen any uh, really big fights or anything between anybody. So Sometimes people get sick of each other because they're hanging out with each other so much that it gets old. So come see the result of all the hard work when Fiddler on the Roof opens February 21st and runs through March 2nd. Okay, we're ready to start the show, Tom. But I think we still need something. You mean something like that? Yes. Okay. Now, Tom, we're going to be safe tonight. Yeah, you know, it's a shame people don't know everything they need to know about drunk driving. You know, South recently held its Students Against Destructive Decisions Week. Take a look. During the week of December 9th through the 13th was Sad's Red Ribbon Week. SAD is a club that is students against destructive decisions. They promoted Week to show students the impact of their decisions. Red Ribbon Week was happening because we just started SAD up towards the end of last year, which is Students Against Destructive Decisions, and we knew that we really needed to get the word out to the school about what SAD is about. On the week's agenda, Monday was the passing out of Red Ribbons to students, Tuesday was the signing of a brick wall against drug use. Wednesday was fatal vision goggles, which let students see how alcohol affects their vision. Thursday, more fatal vision goggles, and it was Grim Reaper Day, where students played out a scenario where 20 students were acted like they had died on their way to school. Friday, during first and second period, students were touched by Kara Johnson's story of how choices her sister's boyfriend made killed her sister in a car accident. I hope it had a big impact on the school. Um, it was nice to see how many kids were interested in checking out the fatal vision goggles to get a, you know, get an idea of how impaired their vision is when they've been drinking. And I know all the students that 
attended the presentation on Friday. I hope, hopefully that had a good impact. And um, the Grim Reaper Day, I, I hope that made people think and not just, you know, notice that some people were wearing makeup and had some pretty gruesome pictures, but I hope people actually took a moment to think about what those represented. Ms. Giller took on all these responsibilities without batting an eye, and the return was really great. But what was the most important part of this process? <laughs> I'd say the most important thing for Red Ribbon Week coming together and running smoothly is to is definitely to get help and um, to get students involved because without all of the there must have been at least 20 30 people you know involved in things like Grim Reaper Day and without the people you just can't do it. And all in all I think it had a very positive impact on students at SKHS. It showed us what we need to do to make the right choices and not just do what's cool. We're here at City Hall, where people are still up this late at night, proposing ways to make our community a better place to live. Recently, a group of teachers did the same for our community by going to the state capitol to remind legislators that education is an important issue that must be addressed. Take a look. Initiative 728, Initiative 732, both approved by the citizens of Washington, both designed to improve the quality of education. But after two short years, these initiatives are in jeopardy of being revoked. I-728 was passed to fund maintenance and operations within our state schools. I-732 was passed to fund a cost of living increase for state teachers. On January 14, 2003, representatives from around the state gathered to remind legislators of their commitment. Representatives from the South Kitsap School District attended the rally. Well, we had approximately 15 staff members from this high school that attended Olympia that day. And I think what, what legislators got the message that we're taking the cutbacks very seriously because educating students is a very serious matter. Teachers from various districts gathered at Heritage Park, several blocks from the Capitol. From there, they proceeded to march through the streets of Olympia until arriving at the East Pavilion of the Capitol. Over 25,000 people gathered on the lawn to hear various speakers. They all spoke to the theme of keeping the commitment to all children and the need to provide ample funding for education. I went into education because I love kids. I became disheartened quickly by the uncompensated hours, emotional drain, and the lack of resources involved in such an indispensable job. Many of the participants felt that they were fighting for a good cause. Oh, I think what we have are a lot of people with a lot of very strong concern for funding education properly. We have a really good turnout and it's hard for people to do this because yes. they had to leave their classrooms or their jobs, and, but they have the commitment and they're keeping the commitment to do this. So I think it went better than expected. It was amazing to see how many people here and I'm real pleased with South Kitsap because we had everybody represented. What we're trying to accomplish, I believe here, is the fact that uh, bringing education to the forefront of everybody and I think with South Kitsap, with having community parents and staff here, it is becoming the forefront of, of our community, South Kitsap, and we intend to hopefully continue the conversations. However, there were those who felt that this march was uncalled for. Let me tell you, you deserve smaller classes and you deserve more money. You ought to have it. But right now, if it's not available, where is it? You can take it away from social services? You know, but my only comment to Locke is, I've taught 23 years, uh -huh. and I am mandated over and over and over again to do things with no funding base. Well, that's 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 my question. Well, what? Where is your money going to come from to give you this They're program. going to have to change this tax structure. In Absolutely. The state. But, we, but you don't. You can't do that right now. You're saying you want it enforced right now, and it'll, it's going to take some time to do that. You know what? It's going to be a process. Although there were several debates along the way, the rally was a peaceful event. As the crowd dispersed, spirits were high in hopes that their message had been heard. What we are trying to do is keep the commitment to Initiative 732 and 728, which the voters supported to fund education. We aren't asking for more, we're just asking to keep what we have. Here we are at High Joy Bowl, the hot spot of Fort Orchard. It's 1 a.m. and they're still open, so you can bowl all night for basically nothing. But when they aren't making money, they're lending their lanes to the South Kitsap Lady Wolves. Take a look. In past seasons, you've probably come to see the Wolves achieve victory on the field, on the court, and even in the pool. This year, a new tradition has begun at South Kitsap. 
but you won't find it here, here, or even here. You can only find it here on Bethel Avenue at High Joy Bowl. It's the first ever Sal Kitsap Lady Wolves Bowling Team and the newest addition to the Athletics Department at South Kitsap High School. This being the team's first season, coaches Kathy Hamill and Lisa Kaufman had an interesting time getting the ball rolling. Get it? Ball rolling and it's bowling. Bowling has been going on for about four or five years in the state for a, a new sport for girls to get more athletes involved and it's actually nice because it, it recognizes that there are different talents that our students have and this is our first year and we're just excited to to start the new tradition does this new sport mean all new players definitely not hey i'm samantha campbell and i'm a junior i've been bowling since i was five years old in fact Many of the girls are longtime bowlers who are jumping at their first chance to represent their school doing something they love. So how do you uh, prep yourselves for the uh, matches? Do you guys uh, get really intense or, or how do you do it? Well, we do a lot of things. Like um, we all decided at the beginning of the day that we'd all like stretch ourselves throughout school and then like when we get here we just do kind of like the football team does and you know run and stuff. We run up and down the stairs. and. We run and stuff like that and just uh, stretch our arms and legs because it really gets tight. Right. But all the hard work and dedication pays off on the lanes. The team is even beginning to attract their own brand of die-hard fans. Uh, <clears throat> tell us, what's your favorite part about coming out and watching the bowling team? Oh, it, it's a lot of fun. Uh, the loud noise, it really gets you pumped up, I got to say. Despite a few frustrating moments, the season has definitely had its share of good time. Being on the team has improved my score immensely, <laughs> and it's really fun to just hang out with all my friends and bowl. Um, is there anyone you'd like to thank for making this bowling season possible? Well, of course, probably first off would be Mr. Reichman, our athletic director. He has been extremely supportive of us and the girls, and we really appreciate everything he does. And then probably secondly would be High Joy Bowl, because they allow us to practice here. They really support the girls. Um, willing to help out, and they, they've offered some of the professional bowlers, gave, gave us some tips on who to talk to, and we've had um, great people, Wes Fitz from the Central Kitsap School District has come down and helped out and given assistance as well, but High Joy has been great. Yeah. And a lot of the parents too who have given us their time and support. Two, three. Lady Wolf! Oh man, it's getting cold out here. I wish I'd brought an extra coat or a sweater, but I'd go buy one, but I only have three bucks. You know, you can get a coat or a jacket for really cheap at the thrift store. Really? And you'd also be up on today's latest fashion. You know, thrift store fashion has become an integral part of today's society. You should really check it out. Are you looking for that perfect outfit but don't have the time or money to go to the mall? Check out the rekindling fad of thrift store shopping. We followed some local bargain shoppers to Bremerton to find out where the best and funniest places to shop are. The stores are packed full of interesting clothes. From 80s prom dresses to elementary school t-shirts, they've got it all. And I like to go and find like little boys t-shirts because they're really cheap because usually like you go to some other stores and there's like $15 for a t-shirt. That's ridiculous. I got this shirt for like 99 cents. I'm a very cheap person, so I like thrift stores. And I usually spend about 10 bucks, like maximum, and then go buy lunch or whatever. So I mean, it's really cheap to find clothes and everything, and it's really fun because you just go with your friends and just be stupid the whole time, and it's really fun. My favorite part is finding shirts that only I will have or if somebody else is in the organization or something, I don't know, just individual clothes, not looking like everyone else.
They also have a wide variety of accessories, books, furniture, and toys. So there you have it, everything in one place, cheap prices, and a great trip to take with friends. So the next time you are bored in Port Orchard and have a couple bucks, check out thrift store shopping. We're here at Plaza Twin Cinemas. They get some of the best movies in town, and for half the price. Say, Tom, want to take in a movie? Yeah, sure. Check out these important announcements while we're watching the flick. Watch your thoughts. They become your words. Watch your actions. They become your habits. Watch your character. It becomes your destiny. And now, as voted by SK staff, outstanding staff and students for the month of December. Senior Justin Bauer, outstanding member of South's NJROTC teams. Senior Nicole Kirby, a leader and participant in our school sign choir. Senior Kara Pierce, active in Youth Alive, Natural Helpers, and Retzel Volunteer. Senior Brittany Lyman, cheerleader, Ignite Mentor, and eight other public service organizations. Senior Talina Welsh, President of Youth Suicide Prevention Team. Junior Ryan Burdenka, Lighting Designer for the SK Theater, BCAT Advisory Board, and Production Manager for SK Video Production. Annette Farrington, Department Chair for Special Education and Advisor for SK Peer Mentor Team. Ron Ness, Outstanding Instructor of Physics and Chemistry, Assistant Football Coach. And Elton Goodwin, District Employee for 30 years, Occupational Education Instructor, Baseball Coach for 28 years. Congratulations and thanks for helping make SK great. Hey, this is Edge from WWE, and I want all my Edge heads to keep watching Wolf Tracks. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That really was a great movie, and the best part about it was it didn't break the bank. Yeah, it was totally worth the four bucks. I mean, I couldn't tell which things were real and which things were animation. I mean, you'd have to be in some sort of advanced graphics class to know how to do that. You know, I seem to remember Josiah doing a story about an advanced graphics class at South. Let's take a look at it. Have you ever seen this little guy? Unless you've signed up for advanced or beginning graphics, chances are you haven't. This robot is the product of a program called Rhinoceros. Rhinoceros is one of the three basic computer programs used in the graphics classes headed by Mr. Murray. He's a pretty cool guy. I'll get you gadget. <laughs> For three-dimensional graphics, we use uh, Rhino, which is the program behind us that uh, you can see right now. And it's a three-dimensional modeling program. The nice part about it, I said before that it was intuitive, and really it is. You can literally click on something and pull it out and create a different object. Not only does this program create 3D computer animated images that the user can rotate, but this is one of two 3D printers that schools have on the Kitsap Peninsula. The role of the 3D printer with the rhinoceros is it's one way of printing out your product. In the past, working with Rhinoceros or any other computer program, the only output that we had that we could actually hold on to or touch was a single sheet of paper. Now, the 3D printer came along and that allowed us to create objects like this. Um, what you have to think of when I try and describe to you what a 3D printer does is this is about 400 sheets of paper that have all been glued together. 3D printer was a long time in coming but not as long as they had thought. The printer arrived on Thursday, December 13th, and Mr. Murray began to use it the next day. I was there the night that the first ever South Kitsap 3D printed object was excavated. Finally, the $40,000 printer came through. The ceramics class, the, uh, the CAD and architectural drafting class, and uh, the graphic design class all pooled their budgets. To, to buy this machine. Uh, it's, oh, oh. oh, it's okay. It's it's a learning process. Ah, oh, don't worry. He's got 11 more. The purpose of a 3D printer is to teach our students emerging technology, to get them comfortable with the idea of how 
technology is going to be working in the future. Oh, it's, a, it's a good class. If you have lots of ideas that you could transfer to a computer, it would really work for you. It's a really good class, especially if you're interested in websites or just designing things. There are brand new possibilities for all that take beginning or advanced graphics. Why don't you check it out? Well, it's about four o'clock in the morning. We have to be at school in two hours. And here we are at one of the soon-to-be hotspots of Fort Orchard, Pirates Cove. Yeah, there's a lot of behind-the-scenes work going on at Pirates Cove. Uh, they're not quite ready yet, but they expect to be ready in about March. So, until then, here's behind-the-scenes Wolf Tracks. Welcome to this episode of Wolf Tracks. Hi, and welcome to this edition of Wolf Tracks. Hello, and welcome to the 10th edition of Wolf Tracks. Hello, and welcome to the video production room. This is where the show you're watching right now, Wolf Tracks, is produced. Five years now, there have been 43 consecutive episodes. Tonight, we'll show you what it takes to make episode number 44. The best place to start is with an idea. And the best ideas start right here, on paper. The majority of ideas start with clubs or activities that the student's already involved in. Like Chris Nelson and his community theater story, or Nikki Bilodeau and her acting ensemble story. But other times... To get ideas for stories, you know, I always have these crazy ideas floating in my head, I don't know. Oh, they're completely random. I don't, I don't actually like... When I try and sit down and be like, okay, I'm gonna think up a story right now, that never works. Like, it seems like there's not a time passes by when I don't go, oh, that would be such a good story, I gotta write this down, I don't know. So I'm always writing and putting ideas down. They really come pretty... They never come really when you want them to. They come kind of from the side. You take, it's always like this little idea, and then I have to kind of figure out ways that I can make it work. After the idea comes the hard work. At the start of the month, about 30 stories are in progress. After shooting, editing, interviewing, editing, reshooting, editing, writing a script, and editing, the final seven or eight stories finally make it into Wolf Tracks. Oh, I love television. I love to watch television. My wife sometimes have to pull me away from television. But it's not just any television. I love good television. I'm stopping you, you know, and when the bell rings, you're like, oh, I don't want to go. I got to finish this. And, uh, you know, and then once you get it done, you just look back and you're like, ah, oh, that didn't take too long. And that was, you know, fun and everything. It was a good project. Sometimes Wolf Tracks is good television. And I love it. Yeah, it's, uh, sometimes Wolf Tracks is bad television, and that drives me crazy. Sometimes. They, they're just like, dude, you did good. You did a good job. So, I've uh, over the years, I've had a number of students who really work hard at this, and it and it shows. Even with the stories finished and picked out, the show still needs something: a producer. It's the producer's job to write the script for the hosting, to shoot the hosting, and to edit the show together. Some of the hosting concepts are rather lame and plain, while others are more elaborate and detailed. This month's show producer is me, Chris Nelson. Oh, and Tom Henry is going to be there somewhere, too. Producing a show can be hectic at times, but a lot of the time it, it goes smoothly. It has for me so far, knock on wood. I really enjoy it when there's actually like a clever concept that's come out. Like, uh... I mean, It's really cool to see the finished product on TV, because you know that you wrote that, and you shot that, and you put that together, and it was all you, and it's really great to, it's a great feeling. As you can tell, there's a lot of work that goes into making a show. We hope it shows as we take you back to Wolf Tracks. You just saw what goes on behind the scenes of Wolf Tracks. This is what goes on behind the scene of making the hosting. This one part. So when the arrow comes up, when the arrow comes up on these ones, you hit the button. Oh, dude. Hold the flash down there. Yeah. Come inside. Uh.
A fiddler on the roof. Sounds crazy, no? This is a political question? In a theoretical sense, yes. The relationship between a man and a woman, known as marriage, is based on mutual beliefs. But in our little village of Anatevka, you might say that every one of us is a fiddler on the roof trying to scratch out a pleasant, simple tune without breaking his neck. A common attitude and philosophy towards society. And affection. And affection. And how do we keep our balance? That I can tell you in one word. Tradition. <laughs>